Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how you can make simple stylized lightning. So I've seen a number of ways of making lightning online, using geometry nodes, but they have a tendency to include some maths which, to be honest, makes my head explode, and while I could copy them, I want something that's a little bit more controlled. And for that I generally want to really have a good understanding of how it works. And in some of the more complicated methods you can see you'll get lots of little sub arcs coming off of each of the lightning which you could add to this as well. But for this I just want a really clear, simple lightning stream. And I want to be able to, if I go into edit mode and just delete all of these, come in, draw an arc, and that create my lightning. And if I want to, oh, yeah, I could draw another one in and that's gonna create a second arc as well. So this does work for doing multiple lightning strikes. And within this, I want to be able to control things like how much it's gonna wiggle on a large scale. So I've got a really big scale wiggle here, which I can control but I also want to be able to control all the minor wiggling as well, so it keeps the general shape but has these little smaller parts that give this this lightning feel. I can also control the radius as well, so we're gonna have a look at how we can do all of these. So let's just start by getting rid of that, and we're going to need to begin this with a Bezier curve. So I'm just gonna shift an A and bring in a Bezier curve, which is over here. I'm just gonna move that along a bit. It doesn't really matter where it is, but for now, I'm just going to move these to approximately where I want the beginning and the end of my lightning to be. Now at this point it doesn't look very interesting, but we're going to sort out this movement. Oh, let's just get this one actually where we want it to be, which is obviously a little bit easier when you're drawing it. There we go. So we're going to be using geometry nodes for this. I can't really think of another way of doing this, so let's start with a new geometry node and we're going to start by talking through what we sort of intend to do and then we'll work from there. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to draw this line that we've got here, but I want to firstly tell it to break up into several larger segments. So let's say for example, put a point here, put a point here, so to create the more major part of the lightning. And I want that to be at random just so it takes less time. Then I want to break this into lots of smaller sections so each one of these lines gets broken up more and each one of those moved which is going to result in this sort of overall wiggle that is going to look more like stylized lightning. Now as I said there are some more complicated methods of this online which can do some really funky things using spline length and stuff like that and having multiple arts coming off. I'll put a link to a couple of good ones in the description but firstly I didn't think that was a point of me copying that because well they're already out there so why bother making another tutorial on it. And as I said, I wanted something that I think is more understandable. So let's start this off straight away with this idea of creating these larger wiggles. So what we're going to need to do is add some more points in. So let's shift an A and we're going to resample the curve. That's going to add in these extra points and we're going to have a count for that. Now that's going to be something that we're going to want to be able to control outside over here. And I'm going to give that a name. So we've got the count here. It says an integer, which means it's going to be whole numbers. So we can see it's at 10 but we're gonna call this something like the wiggle count. I can't think of a better word for it at this point, but you know what I mean, the wiggle of the lightning. And let's put that down to let's say four or five at this point, just for where we start. Next, we're gonna to want to move these around. We want that to happen randomly. That's the main task for creating lightning or something that looks like it is this random shape. Shift A and we're gonna set the position of these points. So we'll bring that in there. And this means that we can offset these points all to one way or up, down, and so on. Let's just bring those back to zero. Now, we want this to be random, so for that we're gonna use a noise texture. And we need to use a noise texture, not a random value. I guess you could use a random value, but it's probably not gonna be as good as this noise texture. We're gonna put all of these down to zero. The only bit that I care about is the scale. And we need to use the color for this. Now, this is the only bit of math that I do need to explain. Other than this, it's all fairly obvious in terms of just multiplication or division or scaling things up. So if I just drag this into here, we can scale this and we get this random movement, okay, which is great. Now, if I just come off to the side, we can have a look at this and we'll notice that every time we scale this, it only goes in one direction. It only goes off slightly upwards, slightly over to the side. And that is because that when we've got a noise texture, Noise textures work as if they go between zero and one. So we're adding between zero and one onto the Y, onto the Z, and then onto the X, which is towards the screen. Oops, let me just get rid of that annotation. So we need to sort this out so it's not going just between 
0 and 1. We want it to have a negative value as well. So all we need to do to sort that out is just come in here and add in a vector maths, slot that in, and we're just going to subtract 0 0.5 from these values. So what that means now is that it's going to have a value between minus 0 0.5 and positive 0 0.5. Now because of that it's getting a bit small so we're going to want to make this larger so we're just going to do one more vector maths and we're going to do a scale. You could do a multiplication I think but we just want to scale this up and that's going to allow us to enlarge the amount that this is moving by and we can still change the scale which almost acts as a seed. So we can change how much it's moving by and then scale that up as much as we want. So let's just make sure that we can add these in from over here in our modifier. So we're gonna change the scale. So we're gonna have the scale here. We're gonna call that major wiggle seed because while it's called scale, it acts like a seed, it changes. And then we're gonna add the scale. So we've got, so we've got major wiggle scale. So we can change that all over here nice and easily. Now, We've got a problem at this point. The one thing that I want for this, if I'm going to be modeling, especially for something that's gonna be 3D printable, I want to be able to say where it starts and where it ends. And at the moment, this wiggles around everywhere, including the start and the end. So we need to say not to do this to the start and the end point. And that's relatively easy to do. We've got this selection. And if we just go to end, we get this endpoint selection. So we can say, yes, one of the start, yes, one of the end, but we're now gonna say, do not affect this. So we want a Boolean maths with a not. So do not affect the start and the end. And now you can see we can change these and it will only affect the points in the middle. We can still add more points on if we want. Okay, let's get rid of that end panel. So this is our wiggles that we need. And pretty much, we're just gonna to have to do this again to create the minor wiggles. So let's just select those, Control and J to put those in a box, and then F2, and we'll call that Major Wiggle. There must be the proper name of what these little twitches in Lightning are called. Please do say in the comments so that at some point in my life I can stop calling these wiggles. And then I'm just gonna Shift and D, drag that over here, and we're gonna rename this. So F2, and we're gonna call this Minor Wiggle. Now at the moment, this is doing exactly the same thing again. So this is gonna cause us a slight problem. It's not gonna do anything. And the main reason why, if you remember that earlier diagram, we've now got our major wiggles. So here, what we need to do is add in all the little sub wiggles that are gonna come along. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we've already got our wiggle count. All we need to do is just make more wiggles. So what we're gonna do is move that out. So we've got a point up here. We're just gonna use a math node. Let's grab that in, change that to multiply, and we can put that into our resample curve count for the minor wiggles. So we then need to multiply this by a value to make it larger. So let's come down here. We're gonna call this minor wiggle count, and let's put that up to 10 at this point. So we've got 10 minor wiggles. Let's just make these a bit smaller so they're not getting in the way. And now we just need to use the similar thing with our noise texture, but we need to make everything smaller. Otherwise, it's just gonna twitch around or wiggle around in this sort of larger style. Let's just connect all of these up at this point. So at the moment, we've got these really large, over-exaggerated wiggles, and we need to make this smaller. So we're just gonna do some division on this. There's probably other ways of doing this, like we could fiddle around with the scale to make it smaller, actually. Maybe we do just want to fiddle around with the scale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this scale figure here. So let's just shift A and bring in an input geometry node just so that we don't have to bring everything in from the beginning each time. And then we'll change this scale. So we're gonna have the scale come in here, call this minor wiggle scale. And then we just want to do, again, a division. So let's just maths, and we'll change that to divide. And we'll put that at something like, I don't know, we could divide it by five. Let's have a look at how that looks. And then we've got our minor wiggle scale. Yeah, that's pretty good. That gives us some nice fine control there. We also want to be able to affect the noise texture of this. So let's just bring that in. So again, we'll bring the scale in. In fact, actually just to be consistent, that one should be up. So let's put that there so it's higher. And then we'll again call this minor wiggle seed. So now at this point, we can control our major wiggles we can control how big those major wiggles are. We've got our minor wiggles and we can make more or less of them. That should actually be an integer. So let's just change that minor wiggle from a float to an integer. So now we've got a whole number there. Definitely don't want it that high. So let's bring that down to, I don't know, somewhere there. And we can control how they look. 
and we can control how large the minor wiggles are as well. So at this point, we've pretty much got our lightning doing what we want it to do. Now, we do need to make sure that this has got some thickness to it, otherwise it's just a line. So let's come in here, and to do that, all we need to do is turn this curve into a mesh. So curve to mesh, put that in there, and for the profile curve, we're just going to use a circle, so a curved circle. Now at this point, this is going to have a ridiculous radius. I'm going to put that down to, let's say, 6. And the radius is going to be way too big, and we want this radius to be, again, much more controllable than this. So we'll turn this into a controllable feature. Let's just bring that out. And we'll need for that our input again. So let's bring in another group input. And we'll put this radius here. So we've now got our radius. We could probably leave that the same. Now, as I said, we can't really control this very well here. It's sort of controllable, but I want to make it a little bit easier to control. So I'm just going to do, again, a math node, and we're going to divide this, let's say, by 5. And then we've got a lot more control over our radius. I might even put that up to 10. So we'll call that 10, and then I can really get some fine control over my radius there. We're also going to want to fill the caps if this wants to be 3D printable, and we're pretty good to go. Now, just so I can see this and point out some issues, what I'm going to do is put in a shade smooth. This is mostly because I like 3D printing, and for this I don't want to see this smooth. I want to see exactly how this looks. So we've got that there. If we wanted to, we could put this resolution as something that we can control. So once again, let's put there, and we've got our resolution. We can put that up or down as we choose. So at this point, our lightning is looking pretty good. We can draw things out, and it will just change and create this lightning. So if I just A and then delete, delete all the vertices, come to the drawing, and then just draw a lightning, we've got our lightning. And we can change everything as we choose to. So great, we're good to go. Now, there is one thing that you might want to add to this. This is entirely up to you, and it does cause problems. So you might just want to leave this like this at this point. But there is a minor issue here where if you've got some really extreme angles, this one's a good example, the lightning gets a lot thinner and it doesn't look quite right. Now do bear in mind if you're 3D printing, that's going to be a point where you're going to need to support it potentially and that's now creating a weaker point because it's thinner. So we might want to do away with that and there is a way around this. As I said, it can cause more problems, so just bear that in mind and make a choice on whether you want this. So what I'm going to do to fix this is just effectively bevel these points. I'm just going to round them off. So to do that, we just need to, before this curve is becoming a mesh, we're going to bevel it, which in geometry nodes is called a fillet. So we're going to go to fillet curve, bring that in here, and that's going to start rounding things off. Now, the first thing we need to do is limit the radius, because otherwise this is going to really overshoot fast. And you can see what this has done here. It's added in a slight curve that rounds everything out. So quite a nice way of doing it. Now, sometimes, I don't think we've got too many problems here. I'm trying to find an example of this. You can get this causing issues where you're going to get this hitting into each other. Here we go. I've made one there. So we can cause some problems with this. The limit radius does a lot to solve that, but it's not going to solve it every single time. So if you do want to have this and you want to solve that problem, the easiest way to do that is after you've got your curve to mesh is to bring in a merge by distance. So if we just merge by distance, put that in there, this will now merge those problem points as soon as I get this to the right value. That is going to be vastly too much. So again, let's just bring this into our geometry node input. So we'll have bevel radius. And then we're going to have, and then we'll have merge distance. And again, so we've got some finer control here. We're going to bring in a maths node, and we're just going to divide this by, let's say, 10. And that's going to make this much easier to control. So we can just up the merge distance, and you'll see we can just get to the point where it fixes it. This gives us a slightly less violent looking lightning. It's a little bit more curved. We can change that by just upping the wiggle scale. So again, that's going to look a little bit more lightning-like. And again, we can just have a quick check to make sure we haven't got any problems there. And then if we do, we can just change our merge distances to make that work. So there we go. We've got our lightning where we can control the major wiggles and their scale. We can add in more or less minor wiggles, change the wiggle seed for the minor wiggles, 
change how large the minor wiggles actually are to the point where you can get them nearly flat if you want to and we can change the radius and we can change our resolution or things like how much it's beveled. So there we go, that is our lightning. So I'll just put that as large as I can make it and scroll through this so you can copy it as you choose to. If you want to get this faster, this file is going to be on my Patreon page. So you can literally just copy this across and save yourself a bit of time. Hopefully with what I think is more simplified maths, I think division is about as complicated as this gets. Hopefully this was easier to follow the way that this works. If you did find it useful, please do hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you do want to support further, there is that Patreon channel should you want to have a look at it. Have a great day, guys.